So I'm actually here with, I think, good news. There is this learning revolution taking place in the sciences. It's silent in the sense that when I go out to schools and places, nobody's really heard the good news. Um, so I want to say a little bit about it. Um, but listening to Andres um, standing here on the dugout in this beautiful uh, stadium, I have to say, I'm not just a scientist. I'm a bit of an athlete myself. Um, in fact, I scored the winning basket in the first high school basketball game I ever played in. Uh, yeah, we'll hold your applause. Um, <laughs> full disclosure is I actually got distracted and scored for the other team. <laughs> and we lost by one point. Um, but that's not what you'll remember, okay? What you need to remember is I was a hero to somebody, okay? <laughs> so, okay, back to my talk. I'm here to talk about this learning revolution and um, it is, as you heard in the introduction, you know, slightly ironic, I think, that I'm actually here telling you about learning science. Uh, because I think if you would have asked me as a little kid, like, what's the worst possible job you could do? I would have said a scientist studying learning. And it's, um, it's largely because, truthfully, I hated school. I'll just say it. I, I really, it's not that I hated learning, I, I like to learn, I just didn't feel like I was learning at school. And it never ever quite felt like it was a good fit. So the thing is, is that I think we all, especially here, we all feel like that sometimes. We get that it's, school's not always a good fit, but I think a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people in this country feel like something's not right with the way that we uh, educate students. And we've taken turns blaming just about everybody that we can, right? The students, sometimes the parents. The teachers are our favorite punching bag. And that's, it's just not the case. I would argue that the problem is bigger. The problem is that the whole education system is based on a really, really outdated view of learning. And the good news is, you know, that might have been okay maybe like 100 years ago when I think we didn't really know that much about learning. I think our, our view of learning was if you hit them, maybe they'll try harder or something. But so, so, okay, maybe we didn't want to apply learning science then. But it's unacceptable now because we know a lot about learning. And what we know about learning, you're going to really like because you know it intuitively from trying to survive in a system that doesn't understand it, okay? And it kills me, I have to say, since I didn't like school that much, I really didn't like math, okay? So it's going to kill me to have to point to the scoreboard and say, the learning revolution is an equation. It, it really is. I, I wish it wasn't, but it is. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. It's variability times your context equals the outcome. Okay? Variability times context equals outcome. Now, the first you may already appreciate. You know, we're really, really different. Variability doesn't mean anything until you put it in different contexts. That's the idea. That's the equation that allowed me to change my own life. So I want to tell you about the learning revolution through my story. So we're going to start with what I knew to begin with, which was variability. We talk about it. We're here to celebrate it. You know, we're all different. But the problem is that's not quite enough when I only knew that as a little kid, I knew I was different, and that's it. That took me down a path that, as you heard, was really fantastic, right? 0 0.9 GPA. Uh, you have to work really hard <laughs> to get a 0 0.9 GPA. So if anybody wants any tips about uh, how to do that, I'd, I'd be happy to tell you. Um, but yeah, I found myself working minimum wage jobs that I absolutely hated. And, you know, having to survive on, uh, the, on public support. It wasn't until I realized that's not the whole equation. It's not variability equals your outcome. That there's more to it. That there's this other part, this context part that matters. And it wasn't until I understood that, that I started to be able to take control of my own life. People ask me all the time, well, that's just a really, like, 
seems like a crazy story because it was seven years from when I fell out to when I got accepted to Harvard. And they said, what's the story? And, and the kids will appreciate this. Almost everybody thinks the story was that I was trying harder. And it's just garbage. I tried as a kid. It's just the things that I tried didn't seem to work. And this isn't a story about trying harder. It's a story about understanding yourself and having control of your environment. So when you do try, the things you try have a chance of succeeding. So here's the thing. I, I'm here. I want to tell you this story. I want to tell you this equation. I want to tell you and try to convince you that... This is probably the most important equation you'll ever learn. I don't have anything to sell you today. I wish I did. That'd be great. I'd put it in a little box like the Todd 3000. And, um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of good products that help, but I genuinely believe to the extent that I know what I'm talking about, which you can decide later, um, that this, the most important things that you need to know are free. And they're relatively simple, and you can start doing them today. And so I want to make that argument that that's the equation you need to know. But as the first act of taking control, just listen. And if you think I don't know what I'm talking about, don't do anything. But if you think it sounds about right, then get started, OK? So that's what we're going to do now. I want to start with the thing you probably know, variability, OK? Now, breaking news, scientists say we're all really different, you know? Believe me, this sounds like really revolutionary in science. Everyone's fumbling over themselves to say how amazing it is. When we look at the brain, it's, we're all like incredibly different. We look at the, your genetic makeup, we're all incredibly different. But we've known that for a long time, right? I mean, come on, we're here celebrating that. So I will just add two things to this. Number one, when we say you're different, we are really, really different. I, I love variability, but when I look at the brains, and when we participate looking at genetics, it shocks me sometimes that all you see is just a bunch of variability. This idea that there's some average person or average student is nonsense. Okay. The second thing, just personally, I want to set up because it matters later in the talk. We're all this bunch of variability, but not all variability is the same. So I want to make a distinction between two kinds of variability that I think may be useful for you. Boring variability and interesting variability. So, Boring variability, most of what makes you different, nobody cares about, right, okay? It's not gonna affect your life. Like, you look at, say, um, let me think, my boring variability. Um, I can, can you curl your tongue? Yeah? No, oop, nobody cares, right? Um, I'm le anybody left-handed? Yeah, oh wow, that's, okay, that's good, thank you, that's great. Um, me too, that's not, that's pretty boring. Actually, my first grade teacher thought that I was of the devil because I was left-handed. <laughs> Seriously. So maybe that's not always so boring. Um, now, please, I hope somebody else go comes with me on this one. I like the smell of skunks. Someone else? I was just kidding. What's wrong with you? Like this, no, I'm just kidding. I like this. I mean, I really like it. I don't know what's wrong. But that's weird, but I don't think that it's going to affect my life much, okay? So this is kind of boring variability. However, everybody, everybody in the world has a small collection of what we'll call interesting variability. And we say it's interesting because one way or another, it's gonna affect your life, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you a few of my interesting variabilities and they may sound familiar to some of you. Um, I get distracted very easily. Uh, I am incredibly forgetful. Uh, in fact, someone just had to give me sunscreen. <laughs> that would have been bad. Um, so, you know, my fair complexion. Um, I have zero tolerance for boredom whatsoever. Like, I just, even going to the movie theater, you buy your ticket, you sit in your seat for 10 minutes. That 10 minutes is like hell. It really is, to the point where I'll have my wife buy the tickets, and like, I'll be like, I'll go get popcorn, you know? I'll just wander around. I can't sit still, okay? Uh, scientists will call that novelty seeking, and I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Um, another very interesting variability is I tend to be impulsive. And when I mean impulsive, sometimes it turns out all right. Of course, when it turns out all right, by the way, we make a whole different word for it, right? Spontaneous, right? <laughs> 
But when I say impulsive, I mean um, the two and a half years between when I got married and had my, we had my son and I started to go to college, I had 12 jobs, um, which that will come up in the story in a minute too. Um, one of which was I was working for commission at Circuit City. I'd been there for two weeks. I hadn't made any money yet. Um, and on my lunch break, I walked across the street to a used car dealership. And I just was like looking around and the guy said, let us just run your credit. You'll be surprised what you can afford. And he was right. I was very surprised to find out I could afford a $450 car payment. I didn't make $450, but I thought, why would they give me a loan if I couldn't afford it? So I bought a car um, on my lunch. And it was a car that was a stick shift that my wife didn't know how to drive. And she was mad for some reason, right? So uh, luckily, we only had the car for about you know four months before they took it back. So um, that's what I mean by interesting variability, OK? It's going to affect my life. Um, so the thing is, when we think about what it means, that first part of the equation, variability, the big thing for you to think about here is it's not just like, you can call me ADHD. I mean, heavens knows my mom will agree with you. And you know, so will just about anybody that knows me. That's fine. But it's deeper than that. We're just all really, really different in almost every dimension possible, OK? So we're a mix of a bunch of boring and interesting variability, OK? So that's the first one, the part you probably knew. 